Believe me, Ghana possesses unique natural scenery like the Chinku waterfalls. In an urban settlement like Dodua, Accra, you do not expect to see such beautiful scenery as this. Skip the stress of the week and pay a visit to this place. You would appreciate my speech and nature afterwards. The Chinku waterfall belongs to the Odamite Kwe family of Dodua. It is sometimes called the Rudurudu. It is about 22.1 kilometers from Adenta. And it is the only waterfall in Accra. As of when this video was taken, the entrance fee was 10 Ghana cities per person. For the first door and for the second hiking to the top of the fall, cost 50 Ghana cities. We didn't try that because we were already exhausted and had no time to hike for 45 minutes. From the entrance to the fall is quite a journey to take. According to history, the Adum waterfall, which has the same source as the Chinku waterfall, was discovered by a lost hunter about five decades ago at Obosumase. The hunter reported his discovery to his family, who later named it Adum meaning grace. It is by grace that he stumbled upon the waterfalls. Streaming down to Dodoa from Obosumase, the Equiapin people named the waterfall Chinku after their god. The water has its main source in the eastern region of Ghana and flows through Ashaman and Sakumono into the sea. The people of Obosumase come to the waterfall to pour libation to their god, Nana Chinku. But now, because of certain anthropological activities, the gods are believed to have relocated to Obosumase. They only come to the Chinku waterfalls during ceremonies in which libation is poured. The place was governed by traditional rules and norms for tourists and settlers to follow. For example, women in their period were not allowed into the water. Also, you are not to visit on Wednesdays as snakes are believed to come out of their hiding holes. I doubt this rule because we visited on Sunday and were chased by snakes in the water. Probably this traditional rule has changed with time and called out snakes to visit on ordinary days or Wednesdays are just sacred or climate change. The water flowing through the forest is very clear and community uses it for domestic purposes. The waterfall was previously part of the eastern region but after demarcation it became part of Greater Accra. The site has an amazing view, but I was expecting to see Dodua Forest, which they said was once dense. There is no forest. It has all been exploited. Just trees to make the place a little dense. Aside from the water flow, which gave us a soothing mind, nothing was interesting about the place. The road to the place was terrible with sharp and rocks. Marijuana smokers were disturbing the environment, which wasn't a pleasing experience for us. There are no washrooms available for visitors or tourists. If you are found in the worst of these situations, you may need to make nature's call on nature. There were lots of biting measures, also known as intumwa, mosquitoes and other nuisance insects. This is typical of a woody environment. You went home with some bombs, yeah. If you plan to come here, you need some insect repellent. Again, please don't forget your power banks. There is no available electricity in the area. Caretakers of the place have asked for help to renovate and put things in place, but their words are taken for granted. I don't know the importance of Ghana Tourist Authority at this point. If the place is well developed with good roads, restaurant, hotels, and other wonderful services including proper management, the place will attract more tourists than it does now. According to an interview with a caretaker, they are praying for a private body to establish hotel around so they may get electricity and other things to manage the place well. Although the waterfall belongs to a private entity, I believe that some portion of the fees collected from the site could be allocated for developing the place. Firstly, 
they should get a washroom. That is very necessary. One of the traditional rules is to avoid urinating in the water. People do that, especially in pools. So, if we are looking at avoiding contamination of the water, then put in more restrictions and facilities. There should also be standardized regulations to govern the place. When we got there, no one informed us about these traditional rules and norms. Neither did they tell us about the second hiking site and the amount for that. We got to know about this when we got to the fall. If all these were regulated, a tourist will be well prepared at the entrance before choosing whether to take only the first, second or even both tours. The tourist will look out for certain dangers or restrictions on site. In fact, most people do not value the importance of nature. Whatever you throw at nature, it comes back at you somehow. There isn't much at this fall, but the scenery and beauty are enough to fix your burdens. So, if the country is focusing on other agendas, I think pumping more energy into developing these almost abundant tourist sites is also important as it will help us generate revenue. If I want to blame Ghana Tourist Authority, which I do, I need to blame Odamite Kwe family as well. Because if you don't know how to cherish what you have, no one can help you do it better. With such beauty, it pains me so much that we are wasting it all away. Protect nature for tomorrow.